Hey guys, how you doing? It's me, Frost Knight. Uh, yesterday they released uh, the new Death Knight Talents tree for the next expansion. So I wanted to make a video to see what's going to be the difference and what build is going to be good for the next expansion and things. And I wanted to share it with you and see like if you have an uh, opinion and what build is going to be good or not. So I already looked into it and I made like some uh, different builds depends on what talent you are going with for breath or obliteration and for ice cap. I'm really excited about ice cap because we have access into the frost will. It's like in BFA. So I think ice cap is going to be really good in mythic plus next expansion. Because this is why in BFA ice cap was good because of the... Uh, of the frost will it's a smaller dragon that flies it's like a our big dragon but it's cooldown or with the pillar of frost so with ice cap when it reduces the cooldown of pillar of frost you will have you will have it like every 15 20 second it also gives you so much mastery i mean even less sometimes if you're going to spam frost scythe i think you're gonna have it like every 10 second <clears throat> so let's take a look on the Frost DK. This is going to be only for Frost DK since this is a Frost DK channel. I really, what I really like is that we have access to Soul Reaper. That's mean Frost DK now have Execute. But if you want to level Soul Reaper, it's going to cost us some uh, utility and survivability spells. We will not have death advance because we will only be able to level up death strike and AMS. And we can't reach for death advance, which means that we're not going to be uh, unstoppable like right now. I mean, death advance can make you skip so much mechanics, so many slows. So not having death advance is going to be really annoying. But you're going to get more execute damage uh, as unholy and like people now uh, you don't have to bring unholy for execute you can bring frost dk with execute uh, with soul reaper talented and he's gonna do do the same damage now soul reaper damage is shadow shadow frost so it means it's gonna be buffed with mastery even if you are frost dk or unholy so Master is going to buff the damage of uh, Soul Reaper. <clears throat> so let's take a look on the builds. Now I made some uh, builds here for Breath and for Ice Cab. Now I really like the Ice Cab uh, build because they bring back the Frost build. So let's go on the frost uh, abilities. Okay, first I'm gonna start with ice cap. So this is, uh, I mean, I made this. Every point here is one talent point. Now, so you have 31 on the death knight tree and 30 on the specialization talent. Okay, which means we have only 30 choice to pick. Now, of course, you want Frost Strike. I mean, these here, all of these five spells here, you're going to need them because, I mean, they are our rotation spells. Frost Strike, Obliteration, Hauling Blast. This is Killing Machine, and this is Rim, which means it's Power Up, uh, power up obliteration, uh, Obliterate, and this Power Up, Hauling Blast. Now, this one makes Frost Strike uh, give you uh, strength. It's like the conduit uh, in, in Shadowland, Unleash Frenzy. Now it's, it's not really good with the breath since when you are when you are costing the breath of Senrigosa, we're, we're not going to use a Frost Strike. <clears throat> so, but you're gonna, we're going to still take it since it's the only option that I see it's good. But this is for Ice Cap, so let's stay to Ice Cap. So we're going to take it, since Ice Cap, we're going to hit Obliterate, Frost Strike, Obliterate, Frost Strike all the time. 
Also, we're getting this is Empower Frost Strike damage, so it's on the row four. Now, this increases your runic power, which is I think it's not good even for a Breath of Syndicosa because five and ten runic power, I mean, it's two talent trees, so I don't think it's really good to take. So this one increases frost uh, frost strike damage, so I think this is the one we need to go even for a Breath of Syndicosa because outside your breath you're gonna start hitting frost strike. So I suggest you go with the with the uh, frost strike damage increase. And Remaster Winter, of course, you want Remaster Winter. So in draw five, this is increases obliterate damage by ten and twenty percent. So this is like two ranks. And we have access now, since we level up Frost Strike here, we have access to Pillar Frost, which I'm very sure you want Pillar Frost. And this is Empower Rem damage. So you're going to take uh, the Obliterate damage increase and the Rem damage increase. So let's go. F I mean, all of these spells here, you're going to take it, except the Runic Power uh, extra runic power because I don't think like 10 runic power is really worth wasting two talents on it <clears throat> so row six here so the first one is like the legendaries in the shadowland obliterate has 10% chance to refound two runes I mean this is only for refounding it doesn't increase obliterate damage such to the legendary and this is Rage of the Frozen Champion. So these are like two talents in one. You choose between uh, Rage of the Frozen Champion or uh, Kultira's Favor. Now, I don't think any, any one of these is good for Ice Cap because uh, you don't really need Runic Power for Ice Cap. You're going to cap or Runic Power anyway. And Obliterate has 10% chance to refund two runes. Now, in Ice Cap and Mythic Blast, we're going to keep spamming Cross Scythe. So, we're not hitting Obliterate unless it's a single target or like less than four targets. So, I don't really suggest you pick it anyway because, I mean, if you want to pick it, you go with Obliterate, has 10% chance to refund two runes. But I don't think it's really good to pick. So, we're going to pick uh, Improve Killing Machine. It's going to make Killing Machine deal frost damage such like in the, in the Shadowland right now. Okay, so the second thing we have is Cold Heart with the Assault. Now, I don't think anybody, any one of these is good. You can go with Cold Heart if you want, because uh, with the Ice Cap you have less uh, cooldown on Pillar, so you can use Cold Heart with Pillar all the time. You can time it with Pillar of Frost. For the second option here, I also don't, don't I don't know what is better than I mean frozen balls is good, but I think for ice cap because you have so much rune refound, I think avalanche is gonna be better for ice cap. So I suggest you go with uh, we're going to go with avalanche, and this is for beating cold, means uh, Remosa Winter do more damage, and if it hit three targets, you're gonna get Trimbrock. We also have a Shell Streak. It's a PvP spell. It's really good in PvP. It deals so much damage. It makes like uh, like you hit the ball and skip bouncing between two targets, and it does a lot of damage in PvP. But for Mythical Blast, I don't think it's really going to be good because I mean, if you raid bosses, if there's like two bosses uh, encounter, I think it's going to be good to pick because it's going to keep bouncing to two targets as long as they stay close to each other. So in Mythic Blast, I don't think it's going to be good. So Bitting Cold, I think it's going to be better than uh, Shell Streak. For the row 7, of course, you need to go with Frost Will, which would give you mastery and deal damage for the ads in front of you. Now this is only for AoE or for single target, it's not really that good because the more target it hits, the more mastery it gives you, up to 20%. So it gives you 2 to 4% mastery for each target, up to 10, 20, means you need to hit at least 5 targets so you can get maximum 
uh, mastery from it. <clears throat> so a single target is not worth to take. You can go with uh, with enduring strength. I think enduring strength is also good. It was in BFA also. Every when pillar ends, you get uh, you still get strength, and the duration depends on how many uh, critical strikes you get inside pillar. It was in BFA, and uh, they bring it back. In BFA, it was better because it was give you strength more than Pillar Frost itself. So after Pillar ends, you get like 3,000 or 4,000 primary stat. But now it gives you 5 to 10%, depends on the rank. So it's good, but less effective than it was in BFA. <clears throat> Uh, this is for the two-handed, if you want to carry two-handed. I I don't think two-handed is going to be good in the next expansion since uh, we don't have tier set. Maybe if they make a tier set, that spawn and glacial advance like the one in the Shadowlands going to, we're going to go with two-handed. But for now, I, I don't recommend you go two-handed. And this is murderous efficiency. If you see murderous, whatever it's called, you're gonna pick it, of course, for rune generation because you're gonna keep spamming cross scythe and cross scythe, you know, take one rune. So you're gonna take this with the weld, and this is gathering storm. You want it, of course, for AoE, and you also get empower rune weapon. Now, the other thing we have two empower rune weapon means like two charges of it, so you can. Use one with pillar, and when the next pillar is ready, you can use it again with pillar frost. Like even obliteration, when pillar is one minute, you use uh, empower rune weapon for the first pillar, and until the second pillar is ready, you use empower rune weapon with it. So like this, you're gonna have empower rune weapon with every pillar of frost. <clears throat> so row eight, we have. Glacial Advance. Now it's good since we have access to both Gathering Storm and Glacial Advance. But since Ice Cap, we're playing with a Frost Scythe. I don't, uh, I don't think Glacial Advance is going to be good because Frost Scythe applies Rune Fraser Ice to all the targets. Also in AoE, you're gonna keep spamming Frost Scythe. I think. Uh, I mean, Glacial Advance is good, so you can. Not cab on runic power, but for ice cab, I don't think it's going to be that much good. So we go with the frost scythe. So we have a new talent here called Bone Grinder, consuming killing machine grant one critical strike for six seconds, stacking five times. I mean, for six seconds, you need to get like killing machine every six seconds. Now, this is, can be hard. Because you don't always get killing machine. For ice cap, I think it should be good since uh, ice cap you're gonna run a lot of crits, so maybe it's going to be better with ice cap. Now, when five st when you choose five stacks, your next killing machine consumes the stacks, granting you five to ten percent increase frost damage for ten seconds. So it gives you like extra frost damage, which is nice. So you're gonna get two of it. You're gonna get two of it anyway because you need to level up to level it. So you can go with uh, ice cap because it's the only talent here that will give you a way to go to ice cap. Ever frost is same as the conduit. Ever frost it give you uh, it make the monster center deal extra damage and the frost scythe of course. You want to go with all of these except the glacial advance. For row 9, which is here, we have cold blooded rage. Frost strike critical strikes have 5 to 10% chance to grant killing machine. Now, th I, this is the second reason why I think it's uh, not going with the glacial advance because you need to spend your runic power on a frost strike. So you get critical uh, so you get killing machine. Okay? And when you get Killing Machine, you consume it with a Frost Scythe. It's going to crit on all the targets. So this is why I think spending Runic Power on a Frost Strike with Ice Cap is going to be better than spending it on Glacial Advance. 
so you can get more crit and it's going to crit on all the target with a frost sight. Maybe they will also empower frost sight. I think it should be good with the with the will and do a lot of damage like it was in BFA. I mean, frost sight in BFA was doing the same damage uh, with as obliteration. I, I mean, obliterate killing machine. So it was really good. So maybe this will make it do even more damage. Uh, here we have access to the dragon. Now, in both build like obliteration and breath and even ice cap, I don't see like it's going to be like a good because you either want to go with ice cap or you want to go with the breath of Sandricosa. So I think that's going to be like a PvP talent for PvP if you want to go with it. And this is absolute zero. Uh, the last uh, option here, Frost Favor Critical Strike increases the chance to grant Tronic Power by an additional 5-10%. to 10%. So this is, will give us more Runic Power generation. This is why it's good with the Breath. You're going to take it anyway, so you have access for Breath of Sandricos. And for the last draw, we have Obliteration Ice Cap. We have Absolute Zero, which is do the same thing. It reduces the cooldown of... Uh, uh, Frost Fury and it freezes the ads and last thing we have a Breath of Sandricos. So this is for the Frost Tree. Okay guys, so this is uh, the one I made for Obliteration. This is for single target and this is the one for Ice Cap. The only difference that we're not taking the will because it's going to be every one minute. And the second thing we're not taking Frost Scythe. Uh, because this is a single target and the only difference we're taking the Colterra's favor for rune refund since we are, keep spamming runes and we're gonna take the um, what was his name again? yeah enduring strength which will give us primary stat when when Pillar of Frost ends, so you get like extra primary stat, five to ten percent. Okay. Now we can't skip Murderous since we're taking Culturous Favor because taking like two rune refounds is going to make us like have so much runes that even more than we spent. So you can skip one point at Murderous uh, and go with uh, two ranks on. Uh, ending strength and you're gonna still have access to to the obliteration you're gonna have a close way here but you're gonna still have access like this instead of going this you can go with this way and you still have access for obliteration okay let's talk about the the death knight tree Now, since now you're gonna see me go into the unholy uh, talent, the reason why because death and death and decay give us five percent haste, and this build uh, this talent will make it will make it uh, cleave two targets with obliteration, same as night fey uh, in the shadowland. Also, this one here make us make the disease that we apply to the targets have a chance to make them suffer 6% more damage from our attacks and it works with all the specs this talent here it's what will give us 5% extra haste inside death uh, and de death deals or death and decay so we're gonna take uh, our add and death and decay with the disease damage increase with 5% haste this talent here will give us it has two ranks which will increase our strength by 2 and 4% it's like a passive uh, strength increase now under here it's not really important to go with these I was thinking maybe if you don't want to go with AMS since uh, I mean AMZ since AMZ 
the rank uh, two will make will give us more runic power. Runic uh, runic power depend on how much magic damage we absorb. It's like an uh, anti magic shell, but it's going to be an anti uh, anti magic zone. So I was thinking maybe we can go this talent build here. It's a uh, it's make death and the decoy slow the targets by 90%, which is the same talent for unholy and blood decay. We you can have access to it. It's really good in mythical blast. You can slow the ads. Lichborn is not really important. I think it's only give us leech. But the best thing here we're going to have access to the blood decay talent, which will make us have 30% damage re reduction below below 30% health so here is in row 6 which is this one we have death reach which, which increases the range of the grip or grip of the dead which will make uh, death and decoy reduces the, the movement speed of enemies by 90% it's the same talent for blood decay and unholy so in row 7 here we have Icebound, 45, we're going to take it anyway, reduces cooldown by 60 seconds, which means that Frost DK will have 2 minute Icebound fortified. Now this is for AMZ, the amount absorbed by anti-magic zone is increased by 10%, which more, uh, it doesn't give more magic reduction, it gives like more absorb. And it grants you up to 100 runic power based on the amount absorbed. This is why this is going to be good for breath, but for obliteration, I don't think runic power is going to be important. So you can go with Lechborn instead for extra leech. <clears throat> Lechborn increases leech by 10% and making immune to charm, or fear, and sleep. Okay, so in row 8 we have Icy Talon. It's uh, doing the same thing right now. Increases your attack speed with your runic power spenders like a Breath of Synergosa or Frost Sight. We have Horn of Winter and I think... I mean Horn of Winter is not the best spell to use but the, the it gives access to a really good buff. I'm gonna go to, to it just after we're done with this. Here we improve Death Strike, make us like extra heal. I don't think it's really good for DPS. Yeah, Well of the Necropolis, damage taken below 30% health is reduced by 30%. So we have access for this if we go with the Lechborn. Or if you're playing with the Breath of Syndigosa, you can skip these two and go with Death Advance, Anti Magic Zone, and uh, Well of the Necropolis for Breath of Syndigosa. Unholy Bound increases the thickness of your Rune Forge effects. So this is will buff our Rune Forge and our weapon. Now I think it's good. I was thinking of going this way. So also you get Soul Reaper and you could also get one extra charge of Death and Decay. Means you have two Death and Decay so you can have more cleave. But I think this depends on the boss fight. If it's two targets you can go with the with it, if it's one target, you can skip the charge of death and decay and go to Soul Reaper. For row 8, we have Runic uh, Attenuation, which is attack, auto attacks have a chance to generate 5 Runic power. It's good only for a Breath of Sinrigosa. Now, this is Rune Mastery, which is what I say we go Horn of Winter for it. Consuming a rune has a chance to increase your strength by 6%. So this will be good for all the builds, for Ice Cap, for Reputation, for Breath of Syndicosa, and especially for Breath because you keep spamming runes to generate runic power and each rune you spend has a chance to give you strength. So this is why it's good. Even that Horn of Winter is not the best ability you can pick, but since it gives access to rune mastery, this is why I think it's good. Now maybe in the future they're gonna change uh, Horn of Winter and put it somewhere else. I hope so. So yeah, we take something better. But for now, I think this is how it goes. Blood Draw. Uh, this is like an extra defensive when you're below 
30% health you drain health from nearby enemies now you can like pick like you see me here I'm picking uh, Wraith Walk now you can skip Wraith Walk and go for it if you want more defensive it depends on the fight because I think Wraith Walk is really good ability it gives you so much movement speed and break you from roots and things so it also make you 100% uh, I mean give you what a lot of movement speed even if you are slowed by something it skip all the slowing effects and just make it go really fast for the last row we have empower rune weapon ammunition limp and soul reaper the same thing as in the shadowland nothing changed here uh, as a frost you go with empower rune weapon yeah we don't need I mean, Ampunition Limp is really good, but if you want to go for Ampunition Limp, you're gonna skip so much damage from the Unholy uh, unholy Tree here. So you, you want to go across the Blood Decay uh, talent. You're gonna be more tanky, but I don't know. I mean, it depends on the fight if your raid leader wants you to go with Ampunition Limp uh, in certain fights for Mass Grip or something. But for DPS, you go with the unholy, <clears throat> unholy talent. Okay, so this is. Uh, let me show you the breath talent build. So here is the breath talent build. As you see, we go with the runic uh, attenuation for extra runic generation. Now here you have two options. Either you want to skip Death Advance with Anti-Magic Zone and go straight to Soul Reaper. So you're going to you only take a Death Strike with Anti-Magic Shell. You're gonna skip uh, this one. Give you stamina, five percent, ten percent stamina, and you're going to skip it with the, all these here and go straight to uh, Soul Reaper and Death and Decoy Extra Charge. You're gonna get more damage, but you're gonna be less tanky, and you might going to keep dying because Death Advance, as I said, is a really good spell. It can make you skip so much mechanics. Even you can use it and keep DPSing instead of like, uh, for example, if something is like, gripping you, is pulling you to somewhere, you're gonna die. You just use you just use Death Advance, and you're gonna stop getting pulled, and you can you can just keep doing damage. But, I don't know, I think it depends on the fight. Soul Reaper only works when the boss reach 35% HP. So it's only going to be effective when the boss reach lower health. Okay, for, so for the, uh, for the breath, for the frost talent, the frost specialization talent, uh, it's the same thing with the ice cap at the top. You go with all these spells, as I said. You don't go with extra 10 runic power. Uh, it's like a increases the maximum runic power you can have. So 10 runic power, uh, I don't think it's really worth going for it. Um, you go with Kultira's favor. I think I I meant here going with the Rage of the Frozen Champion. I think I made a mistake going with this way. So you go with the Rage of the Frozen Champion. It give you it's the same thing in Shadowland, give you extra runic power every time you hit Trim. And you go with the. Uh, what it called was again? Enduring Strength. No, wait. Ah, uh, Bonnie Grinder. So this is make you, every time you use, every time you hit killing machine, you get 1% extra critical strike, stacking 5 times. And when it reaches 5 times, uh, you get 10% extra frost damage. So it's going to be really good with the Breath of Sanjigosa. And yeah, we're not going with the will, because as I said, it's going to be 1 minute, and it's not going to be that good. And this is for like single target and AoE. I don't think you're going to change anything for AoE in here. I feel the breath build is like 
uh, I mean the talents you're going to pick for the breath they really work very well with the breath but for ice cap and obliteration I mean we need like extra one talent point or two so to make it like work 100% but for breath of Sinrigosa I mean I feel it's working much better it wasn't really complicated to to make the talent tree for a breath but for obliteration and, and ice cap because we have so many good options and you don't know which option to pick from I mean I think it requires simming so maybe when the expansion release I think we're gonna have to sim to see what's going to work better for ice cap and obliteration than other talents but for a breath I think it's obvious than just looking by the spells and what they do you know that you're gonna pick this and pick this and yeah this is for the breath of Sandricosa now as I said I think ice cap is going to be really good next expansion since we have the will it's going to give you so much mastery you're gonna keep spamming cross scythe and you can you have access to so many critical abilities for example for frost dk uh, on the death knight tree we have access to here we have yeah merciless strikes increases critical strike chance by two to four percent two ranks talent now you're gonna have to take two ranks this is not like you take one rank and it's okay you're gonna have to take two ranks so you can go further to the to the other talent in the same in the same way so that's mainly you're gonna have four percent uh, passive critical also for the unholy we have five percent uh, strength increases strength chance I don't know it's going to be I think they miss a uh, spell here. There's like no strength chance. So this is increases strength by 2%. 2 to 4%. Now if you don't want to go with Soul Reaper for Unholy, you're just going to stop at this point. You don't need all these. This is for utility, for as I said, slowing the ads and Mythic Plus. But if you don't need it and you're just looking for damage and utility at the same time, you're going to stop here. And then you can just pick. Uh, you're going with all the frost uh, talents here, except. Uh, I mean, this has give us like extra target to chain of ice. I don't think it's going to be that important. The blinding sleet, you can, uh, for example, take one less point into something like Ledgeborn and go with the blinding sleet for CC. I think we should go for it because. Uh, we don't have any CC since we're not taking stun or blinding sleet, so I think we need to sacrifice one point at something here. For example, this here uh, reduces the cooldown of anti magic shell, reduces the cooldown of anti magic shell by 20 seconds and increases its duration and amount absorbed by 40%. So this will give us like more magic, uh, magic absorb. It's good. I mean, more more magic absorb mean more runic runic generation. Because uh, you take runic power depends on how much damage you absorb with the anti magic shell. Also, anti magic zone is really good. For a breath, you take one hundred runic power based on the amount absorbed. Now I think this uh, like depends on the fight because if if you're not taking any magical damage, it's going to be useless. I mean, going all the way just to take it for runic power, and the boss is not doing any magical damage, so I don't think it's going to be worth if the fight is doesn't have magical AOE damage. I mean, at at least at the point where your breath is about to end, because you're not going to use it on full. You want to use it. If you want to use it for runic generation and not for defensive, for AoE defensive, you want to use it where your breath is about to finish. So you use it, you take magical damage, and you generate more runic power. But if the fight not working that way, 
uh, I think it's going to be wasted to go for it. You can just pick anything else. I mean, you have here more leech, 3% extra leech or 3% avoidness. Uh, so, you know, you can sacrifice it for anything else here. And yeah, but I think this is everything for the Frost DK. The other talents is not really like a new, they all the same things. I was only focusing about the new changes and the... I think it's going to be a really good expansion just by looking at these talents you have we have so many options to play and we can just play with the, with the talents as we want i think it's going to be a really good expansion i'm really excited for it but i'm going i think it's going to be the next year i don't think it's going to be released this year we still have season 4 not released yet and we already have season 2.9.5 three days ago so yeah this one's gonna take like next year or something anyway guys i hope you enjoy learned like took a look at the talents and things and if you have any question or like uh or if i say like something wrong and you think there's a better talent choices just tell me right in the comments and we can talk about it and yeah See you in the next video. Goodbye.